everyone, and welcome back to Behind the Numbers. My name is Dave Bookbinder. I'm a senior director at CFGI, and this is the program where we dig deeper to understand what really matters most in business. So if you are a CFO, an aspiring CFO, or just someone who works in a finance role, this is your episode. I'm pleased to welcome Steve Rosewald, who is the founder and CEO of CFO.University. Steve, welcome to Behind the Numbers. It's great to be here, Dave. I'm really thrilled when you asked, uh, you know, two or three months ago if I'd be on the show. I uh, have anticipated this day since. Yep, looking forward to it, too. So thank you for joining us. Why don't you tell the audience a little bit about who you are? You know, uh, I live out in Vancouver, Washington, just uh, north of the Columbia River from Portland, Oregon. I've been a serial CFO for years and years, and over the past four years, we started CFO.University, which is a development center for finance leaders, you know, aspiring to become CFOs. You know, I appreciate you getting up very early out there. It's a three-hour time difference, so thank you for that. <laughs> So, Steve, why don't we start with the why, right? Why did you develop CFO University, and why is it so important for finance leaders in particular to have a specific resource for them? Well, you know, there isn't, uh, there's MBAs, there's accounting and finance degrees, there isn't really a place for CFOs to go to call home. And so that means where, you know, they have a friendly space, they can learn what we call the four pillars of CFO success. And we think uh, companies will benefit by that, the individuals who are part of CFO benefit from that. Um, and we really focus on practical, convenient learning uh, for finance leaders, again, who aspire to become a CFO. Why don't you tell us what the four pillars are? You know, the four pillars that we teach are accounting, finance, treasury, and leadership. And each one of those pillars has core competencies under it. An example, uh, accounting has governance and controls, so kind of the starting the business, making sure it's solid and sustainable. Uh, there's the reporting function and the recording function are two of the other core competencies of, under accounting. Under the finance pillar, we have uh, three core competencies, budgeting and planning, we have investment analysis, and we have forecasting. And so those are all key areas of the forward-looking part of the CFO role. And then we have a treasury area that where we have a, uh, an important area for any CFO in any company is cash management. Uh, that's one of our, our core competencies. We also have a capital uh, raise or funding section. And then uh, risk management is really important when you start uh, borrowing third party and taking on third party money. And the final part is leadership. And that's more of a stair step, a ladder approach where self-awareness, team building to strategy and culture are kind of a stair step that we use to teach people through those leadership skills. Yeah, well, it sounds like a great curriculum. Um, how do you offer this education? I guess it's mostly online, Steve? <laughs> It's, you know, it has been completely on demand until uh, about uh, four weeks ago, we offered our first live virtual course. Uh, it happened to be on, on leadership regarding uh, data analytics, which is really a popular area in finance right now. But up until then, it's all uh, CFO.University is where we offer all of our courses and tools and there's all, uh, and our content. Gotcha. Tell me a little bit about um, how COVID has impacted the way you conduct your business and, and the way your CFO um, learners, I guess, is the term you like to use for um, how, how they've been impacted during this pandemic. Well, you know, this whole stay, stay at home uh, has certainly increased the awareness of our products. I mean, as far as uh, from an on-demand, there isn't, there are very few in-classroom courses being offered. So we uh, immediately had a an increase in, in viewership and members w when COVID hit. But more importantly, I think for kind of the whole community, the finance community, the business community, is it's created, um, you know, so many different options, some good, some bad, but it's, it's everyone's kind of struggling with their path forward. And so what we really focused on is helping people find that path forward. And like I said, you know, it used to be, we kind of had a, a direction that we were heading and COVID hit, and now there, there's so many different options and directions we can go. Um, we really tried to give people uh, you know, help them kind of sort through that. And we've we've founded CFO.University so many different um, new opportunities. Which one do we go after? Which ones do we go after? And it's exciting and scary and uh, and interesting and hard work at the same time. And I think we're we're not alone in that. A lot of different CFOs and different companies are going through that same 
um, opportunity, optionality type exercise, you know, what is our best direction forward? Yeah, and it's interesting because you've got a lens now too, and not only just as in terms of providing what you do for your communities, but you also are an entrepreneur and a finance leader. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, this has been a, quite a venture for us. So I, you know, for for you know, twenty uh, uh, twenty two years of my career I was in corporate corporate America, uh, and uh, and then for the past uh, past seventeen years, I've been involved in kind of entrepreneur activities, all related to you know training CFOs or helping CEOs find CFOs or doing the CFO role for different companies, and. Um, and that's uh, it, it's a it's a different mindset, uh, but it's also exciting. But it's one that it also I think is important for corporate uh, CFOs and corporate finance leaders to have that a little bit of an entrepreneurial bent, uh, so they can bring new ideas and innovation to their roles and to their companies. Yeah, for sure. So when you talk about those four pillars, um, obviously each of them is significant in their own right. But are there any of those in particular that are more? evolutionary, if you will, than others? What's changing, Steve? Well, you know, I think the, uh, uh, the account, so, so it's kind of a, a, the, the approach we have going from accounting to finance. Accounting um, is a, over a 500 year old industry. Um, it takes a lot of bullets from a lot of different directions because it's based on some historical information. It's backward looking. Um, I don't really look at it that way. I look at accounting as a foundational piece that companies have. Now we may be finding tools that can make accounting easier and simpler and 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 maybe we need less people doing it but we don't need less skilled people we'll need more skilled people in that area uh, with higher skills or maybe less people doing it so it's foundationally accounting is really important where the big um, emphasis now is on the finance part that's the forward-looking piece so if you look at at finance all that the data analytics we're doing data decision making we're you know looking uh, forward is 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 uh, is the whole point of the CFO today is a forward focused CFO uh, that is people driven. So, you know, that's kind of the fun part, you know, the FP&A area of the CFO suite, the finance planning and analysis area. Um, but uh, the accounting is still really important too. And treasury, you know, I mean, you see all the all the IPOs taking place, the SPACs and all the transactions happening, um, and that all, uh, you know, gets greased by money. And treasury is a really important function. It's pretty stable. There's a lot of fintech areas where moving cash is easier and things like that. So there's a lot of innovation taking in treasury, but it's still all about cash management. It's about raising money and it's about risk management. So um, I'd say treasury is stable, but but changing and finance is growing very quickly uh, and it's really the the what most uh, people would term is the fun part of the CFO role and accounting still really important um, can we have to do that well to create a great foundation and then of course leadership the big that's really what differentiates you know finance leaders from you know the other parts of uh, accounting and finance and so you know being self-aware that's very important understanding people and that's where i think you know your show and what you do dave is so good because it really focuses on people and and your book you know roi the new roi is is you know really the return on the individual is is becoming a focus. So understanding how how to manage and how to treat and how to have empathy with with our stakeholders is so important, and that's all part of that leadership pillar that is really growing quickly too in in uh, in the CFO suite. Well, I, I appreciate the plug. Thank you for that, and uh, very Appreciate cool that it. you've got the book in the background behind yeah, you there. That's right. <laughs> I, I keep the book close at hand. Well, thanks for that. Uh, we're going to definitely take a, a little deeper dive into leadership and, and human capital because I know that's one of the new offerings that you guys have. But w when you were just talking about the accounting function, uh, I was thinking to myself, you know, controllers that I know uh, would probably benefit greatly from what you offer here uh, because a lot of them, you know, they're coming up from the accounting background. And I've seen many of them stumble in a role as a CFO just because they, they have that, as you said, the backward looking mentality, just based on their training. It's, it's not, no indictment of them, but as you say, the CFO needs to look forward. So what might you say to uh, the folks who are more in the accounting or, or controllership role who have aspirations to move to the CFO? What's their best bet to get ready for that? 
you know, I think embracing the, the future and getting getting future focused and that that so becoming more FP and ish, you know, as, as much as that that's kind of sounds uh, um, a little different, but I, but understanding how the budgeting and forecasting getting into, you know, the analytics part of the business, I think is really an important area for controllers too. And a, in a lot of small and medium sized businesses, the controller um, getting the books done is the first priority. And you have to get that done well before you can really start thinking about the future. If your if your past doesn't have any credibility, people aren't going to believe your forecasts and things. So I think in many small companies, the controller ends up being, um, you know, the the finance manager as well. And so um, that there's a real opportunity there. If they come out of the CPA world, there's a tendency to make the audit really important. And and not the controls are important; they're really important. But they overemphasize some of those things under what we have the accounting pillar. And so I think releasing your concern about some of those areas and to be able to focus on really business strategy, you know, how to invest money, you know, where you're, how to, you know, what resources, you're starting to look at the resource allocation and how that allocation uh, is affecting the returns of the company becomes really important. And rather than does my general ledger balance, by the way, that just has to be done. I can't, if you're worrying about that, you're gonna have a hard time becoming the next, at the next level. But there's, um, you know, there's things in the accounting role that, that a, like a CPA, for example, has to let go of um, to be able to grow into those other roles, and and uh, that's really hard. We have, we have uh, you know CPAs are, are super super important role, um, but they're but it's limiting when it looks at that historical piece. Yeah, Steve, we're going to have to come up against a break here real quick. But just before we do, let me just ask you um, for those who are watching and listening, if they want to learn more about you, your programs, how to contact you, what's the best way for them to reach out? You know, the best, our, our uh, CFO.university is our URL. So go visit us and just type in CFO.university and you can take an assessment um, that will help you, you know, focus your development, not necessarily at CFO.university, but just your general professional development towards a CFO role. Um, we have a newsletter that you can sign up for, but the best place is go to CFO.university. Yeah, lots Thanks, of good Dave. content out there for sure. We're going to take a quick break. Steve, don't go anywhere. You watching and listening, we'll be right back on Behind the Numbers after this quick break. So I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Jersey, 130 miles of beautiful beaches, solid rock, and everything in between. In the window. <laughs> now that's New Jersey. Plan your New Jersey trip at visitnj.org. Waves of fun. Nights of excitement and a trail of memories. Now that's New Jersey.
Welcome back to Behind the Numbers. I'm Dave Bookbinder, and today we're talking about finance leadership with Steve Rosewald, who is the founder and CEO of CFO.University. Steve, I want to pick up where we had left off uh, just before the commercial break when you were talking about the different pillars, components of leadership, and so forth. And um, human capital was one of the things we alluded to. Um, why don't you talk a little bit about that? Because I know that you're working on a new course that's kind of near and dear to my heart as well. You bet. Well, that's an exciting area. This whole human capital area, um, it's getting a lot of press, but it's also important from a, a, a corporate standpoint. So we're really pleased to be able to partner uh, with you and Bruce uh, and put together a course on human capital metrics and uh, employee engagement. So um, I'm really, I've seen some of the preliminary things uh, that you guys have put together. We're excited to deliver uh, a course uh, that really focuses on, you know, how to measure human capital. It's one of the places where accounting has really uh, failed would be a strong word, but accounting is about the numbers still. And what you guys are doing and what human capital uh, management really focuses on is really focusing on the people and the stakeholders. And so we're really thrilled to be able to deliver um, this course to uh, to our member scholars and to our community because we think it's really valuable that uh, CFOs um, you know, get out from the numbers and uh, and make sure their stakeholders, uh, you know, are, are valued. Yeah, so when you alluded to the name Bruce, that's Bruce Bolger, who is the founder of the Enterprise Engagement Alliance. And yeah, th this is a very interesting course because as you well know, but for the benefit of the audience and, and folks who may be considering uh, signing up for this course, it, it's about not just managing and, and even valuing the human capital component, but it's about building a sustainable culture. It's about driving employee engagement. And my lens as a valuation professional is about connecting those dots between the engagement, if you will, and the value of a business enterprise, because all those dots do connect. Um, Steve, in the, in the world of the CFO and their evolving roles, they're responsible now more and more for a human capital function. So is there anything else you wanted to add maybe uh, to emphasize why this kind of a component course is so key now for this evolving role in the CFO's world? Yeah, you know, I think there's so much information and data that says human capital management, which we don't understand well enough, certainly don't have the metrics around it, um, and how much value that adds to companies. So doing it well is really important. And we don't have the systems yet in place like we do for a balance sheet that has fixed assets on it. And we depreciate those and every receivables becomes pretty prescriptive. And we understand that piece. Uh, the piece that we aren't very good at is understanding the human component of that and how that creates value in companies. Um, so that's why this is is just absolutely, uh, you know, really exciting for us to be able to deliver this course and and to you know further the thought process in the financial community on on you know engaging employees, human talent. How do we how do we make sure we're treating it right, valuing it well, and making sure we're getting better at it. Yeah, when you talk about leading edge topics, I think that's a good one right there. So good stuff, and I'm proud to be a part of that. I want to talk a little bit more in, in the context of leadership. When You, you mentioned more than once the, the, the term self-awareness. And I want you to explore that just a little bit more, because as I think about you know, folks in, in finance leadership, uh, many of these folks are kind of unassuming. They understand the role of, of their leadership as a financial steward of their organization, but not necessarily as a broader leader in an organization. Can you talk about what it takes to make that mindset shift from backward looking to forward looking and financial stewardship to leader of an organization? Yeah, I think what's really important for finance, and we we don't give ourselves enough credit for the impact that we can have on companies. And and I think it, when you say unassuming, I think we're right. Normally, the, as, as a whole, relatively humble people, you know, want to go do our jobs, do them really well, but we uh, don't necessarily uh, focus on the influence we can have. So, you know, how does that happen? It happens with competence and being able to understand, you know, how we. Uh, can impact the decision making in the company, and I think that's one of the big um, one of the big mindset shifts uh, that you know accounting is no longer and finance is no longer a back office function that you know spits out reports at the end of every month and then goes back and does the next close and does the same thing. We are forward looking 
that means we have to learn to communicate very well. So communication is super important. And how I look at communication is we have the obligation to communicate in the terms of our constituents, not tell them about finance and accounting terms that just make their eyes glaze over, but talk in the commercial terms of the business. That's one of the one of the, the thing I think younger finance professionals and accounting professionals can do if they can learn the commercial language of the business and speak to their constituents constituents in that, their credibility goes up. People will listen to them. They'll gain the confidence they need to be able. You know, sometimes it's intimidating. Go out and talking to a, you know, a, a thirty-year operations uh, director at your plant, and you don't know the terms of your business or what they're looking at. It can be very intimidating. So I really encourage people to take that step of learning the language of the business um, as a as a mindset shift in creating confidence in that. You know, in what you're suggesting. Yeah, and that's a great point because there's a couple of pieces there. I mean, just besides learning the language, but it gives you the opportunity to step out from behind that desk and, as you say, alluded to, take the, the walk on the plant, uh, take the tour and, and interact with people. Uh, you're building rapport, building relationships, but you'll also probably learn a lot of interesting things. I mean, I know just as a consultant going into different organizations that were clients of mine and going from the office and then out into the plant, if you will, we, we'd find... Um, very interesting nuanced pieces about how the business operates. You can identify efficiencies and so forth. So good advice there, Steve, definitely. I think that's very, very true that, uh, you know, understand the business means getting out in the business. And that's, uh, that's a huge positive step that finance people can take. I want to talk about the capital raising piece that you mentioned as a, a pillar. You, you use the word SPAC, uh, Special Purpose Acquisition Corp. We're involved in a number of those transactions right now. Super red hot, uh, also known as you know, blank check companies. They're public shells, if you will. I say that a lot these, on this show. I'll have to watch out for that note to self. Uh, public shell companies that are buying uh, operating businesses. It's, it's kind of a backdoor IPO process. But when we think about not only the SPAC, but just a capital raise or exit planning in general, what are the tips that you might offer to folks in the finance function as to how they can be best prepared for those elements of their job? That's interesting. I just, I just uh, not long ago did a video for, and it was more for the the owners. But it, the, the you know what I what I suggested is put your CFO hat on. So for owners becoming more CFO like, I think is really important in a transition, and that means getting your books right. So making sure the books are stellar. So having you know that's, and and I look at it, Dave, as you'll you'll get this completely. But if you're private equity ready or IPO ready, your business, even if you never intend to sell, or you never want, you never do an IPO, your business will be a well-managed business, right? I mean, because the, 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 the bars are so high. But so having, having your books in order, having a good strategy to be able to explain, so being able to communicate your strategy to, uh, to third parties, um, you know, having a really solid management team in place, you know, and all your all your aspects. And we talked about how important people management is, uh, you know, uh, most uh, investors don't want to come in and have to worry about changing up a whole management team. In fact, that can be a real showstopper in a lot of deals. If you, you know, you might have a great product, but if you know, somebody could manage it, they don't want to have to go through that process. So uh, focusing on, you know, those human capital metrics we were talking about earlier is really important too. So getting your financials in order, understanding your 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 people you know needs and skill sets and, and make make sure they're very high quality and then uh, you know having a great strategy in place that you can articulate to an investor yeah like you said get it if you operate in that mindset of being IPO or, or private equity ready you will always have a tight ship in place because you, you frankly never know what's going to happen along the way and uh, exit opportunities present themselves either as an opportunistic chance to uh, cash out or sometimes unfortunately uh, for other reasons Steve how can folks contact you if they want to learn more about you or, or work with you? Well, you know, uh, pretty easy. My email address is steve.rosevald at cfo.university. I'm always happy to, to, uh, to talk to people about finance and especially, you know, finance leaders, you know, looking to, to develop professionally. Um, again, cfo.university is our URL. Uh, love to, love to uh, you know, uh, when people uh, go look, they seem to find interesting things. So if you take a minute to look, I, I think you'll find some interesting things. And, uh, you know, if you're ever in Vancouver, Washington, send me a note and uh, you'll have a cup of coffee when, when the time is right again. Yeah, somewhere out near, near where Starbucks was founded, right? That's right. Not too yeah. far anyway. If you've gone that far, you're, you're just about there. 
So, Steve, we've got just about three minutes or so to go here in the program, but I want to sneak in one more piece on leading edge topics uh, in finance. And they're the three A's, analytics, uh, artificial intelligence, and automation. Can you uh, touch on any or, or all of those and how they're impacting the role of a finance leader? You bet. I mean, I think the finance trans, those all kind of come under this umbrella of finance transformation, which is, you know, whether you call it evolution, revolution, transformation, you know, the changing role in finance. And so I think automation is an important area um, to streamline and make us more efficient. So automation is, is important. The AI piece is enabling us to do things that we, you know, and, and get information that we weren't able to, to, uh, to get before, right? So we're able to, to kind of do things better, prevent errors, um, you know, audit our books. I mean, there's things that, that uh, AI and, and automation are, are really um, enabling the finance function. And then data analytics is really dear to my heart because I see data analytics potentially as a place where we're going to add a revenue stream. The CFOs are going to create information that we could actually sell. And, and, you know, a lot of companies aren't quite there yet, but looking forward and saying, we're, we're doing all these activities, we're collecting all this information. How can we monetize that? Um, and I look at that as another revenue stream. So in addition to the insights that data analytics is going to give us, it actually creates, uh, you know, potential revenue streams down the road to be able to sell that information, curate it in some way. And, uh, you know, and, and make some money. So I think that's super exciting. I think that'll be led by by the uh, the CFO suite. Yeah, interesting. And I can envision a number of uh, industries where those kinds of analytics are going to be absolutely mission critical. Yeah, yeah. No, we're excited. Yep. Cool, Steve. That's it. Unfortunately, we are out of time here on Behind the Numbers. Thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure, Dave. It was great to be here. It was great to have you. We've been talking about finance leadership with Steve Rosewald, who's the founder and CEO of CFO.University. I'm Dave Bookbinder. If you'd like to learn more about me, you can find me on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. And please be sure to hit the subscribe button so that you stay in contact with us and know exactly what we're up to. Thanks again for watching and listening. We'll see you next time on Behind the Numbers. Take care, everybody.